Here and this is Grimm's Comics Corner with something special, Betty Page. Yeah, I guys, I, I gave you guys that um, Invisibles and figure oh, I don't know about the old trans thing. So here's something as kind of maybe a palate cleanser. We're gonna do some Betty Page comics. There's not that many of them, and we'll see what we got. Should be some good poses anyway, right? Betty Page, icon. Betty in Hollywood. I have more issues of this, but this one just covers about four. Betty in Hollywood. It covers four, and then... Um, volume 1 to 4, Secret Diary, Red Christmas, and then volume... Oh, yeah, that's it. Red Christmas, and then Playboy Magazine. All right. Originally published in Playboy Magazine was Red Christmas. Dynamite Adventure always starts the same way. I get an email from Joe Ryband asking if I'd ever like to take a crack at something really interesting. I will admit that I never expected Betty Page to be on that list. At first glance, Betty's not the most obvious subject of a comic book. Especially a PG-13 rated one. Who was she? A model with a roller coaster biography and a career trajectory. Betty was mostly forgotten for years and then nudged back to the limelight by, of all things, a comic book character in her likeness. Hats off to the late, great Dave Stevens. Joe wanted a fun period adventure. When we talked about light tone, we talked about not overemphasizing the cheesecake, and I went off to do a little research. I already knew a lot about Betty, but the best source of information turned out to be Betty herself, speaking on the soundtrack of the documentary, Betty Page Reveals All. Her voice defined the character for me and gave me the idea of having the comic revolve around her secret diary. I am not a southern bill or a model of any kind, but in spite of having virtually nothing in common with her, it was a voice I wanted to write in. I understand that feeling 100%. But I had a secret weapon, and this book is dedicated to her. My wife, Augusta Avalon, also known as Burlesque Star and producer Penny Star Jr. for starters, her grandma, the original Penny Star, was a burlesque dancer in Betty's era. Like Betty, my wife often wears straight bangs over her forehead, but there's a lot more to it than that. Like Betty, my wife is smart and funny and sassy and beautiful. Like Betty, she makes her own amazing costumes. And those are, and those of a lot of other burlesque stars, and she designed some of the costumes in this book. Like Betty, she is a delightful scamp and very much her own woman. She is always an inspiration to me, but this series in particular is a love letter to her, to the world she lives in and has introduced me to, and to her talent and strength. Thank you for my muse and my love. David Avalon, Hollywood, California. I wonder if they're still together. Look at these, just great poses. She was the queen of pinup, folks. All your little waifus started here. Wow. They warned me not to tell this story, but I reckon it's safe now. This all happened back in 51. No one ever heard of me then. I was just a face. A pretty face, slim body, and a sassy haircut. In 1950, a nice cop suggested it to hide my big forehead. It turned out to be solid advice. Betty Page? Make up a straight back. Can't miss it. The lens hounds liked me. I wasn't a scared bunny. God gave me a nice shape. I didn't see anything in particular wrong with having it photographed. Try this, honey. Modeling was a gas, and in the spring of 51, it looked like smooth sailing for this kid. Maybe I should have checked the weather reports, but I always leap without looking. Secret Diary of Betty Page, Chapter 1, Hollywood Bound. That's it, Betty. Throw out your hips a little more. I'll try, but if I throw my hips out too much, I'll be further... <laughs> That's funny. I'll try, but if I throw my hips too much further out, they'll be in Brooklyn. Crash! I always remember there was a late saying that I always remember that was the last sane moment for a while. What's the meaning of this? You can't just barge in here. Federal agents, everybody freeze. Hey! Sorry, gotta go. Come back here. Oof. You ever been arrested? It's not as glamorous as you heard. And feds, forget it. I had a head start on the G men, but I was sorry to leave my clothes behind. I promise this has nothing to do with the boys, as far as I know. Okay, little mouse, don't kick up a fuss. Yeah. Honestly, 
if he hadn't said kick up, I mightn't have, I mightn't have thought of it. So it really was his own fault, right? Do I need to put on a southern accent? Because I have one. Need a hand, Angel? Okay. But if you're a heel, I'll bust you. That all depends on what you want to do with your hands, mister. I figured I could help you down. Wouldn't want to see you scrape a knee or bust a heel. My name's Rick. Rick Chaplin. Howdy, Chaplin. Nice to meet a man of the cloth. He smelled nice. I didn't meet a lot of nice-smelling men. Chaplin is just a name, not a title, wise guy. What's yours? I don't have a title, but you can call me Betty. And you can let go of me now. When I accepted the ride home from Loverboy, I knew there was a proposal coming. Probably an indecent one. What I actually got was a whole lot crazier. I asked for a ride to my apartment in the village. California is farther than I go on a first date. This isn't about a this isn't about a date, Betty. It's a job. I run a little research outfit in Pasadena, and I need a new assistant. I need a smart girl who can take care of herself. Smart? You really know how to turn a girl's head. You don't know a thing about me. Don't I? A girl can escape a federal raid in high heels can probably do anything. And a girl like that is smart enough to know when it's wise to blow town for a while. You think those feds got a good look at me? You're kind of memorable. In this outfit, who's looking at my face? Pretty much everyone, kid. Let me guess, you're married, right? That's a long story. Oh, brother. Tell you what, I'll explain it after we, sh we shop for some new duds for you. You're not exactly dressed for air travel. You're smooth, Rick. Yes, you are. Pasadena. That's near Hollywood, right? Hollywood would be just down the road, Betty. Between Idlewood and Los Angeles, he had plenty of time to tell me his story. Rick Chaplin was some kind of genius. He'd been making rockets since he was a kid. By the time he was out of short pants, he found an outfit called Pasadena Aerospace Technologies. All those late nights at the lab take a toll, though, and his wife, his childhood sweetheart Helena, was stepping out with a buddy of his. They both vanished one morning. He hadn't seen her since. Rick wasn't divorced because he had no idea where to serve the papers. He said it broke his heart. He and his wife and his buddy had all lived together with a bunch of other scientists and weirdos and outcasts in a big sprawling house they called the compound. Guess where I was going to be staying? It all sounded loopy, but the thing is, I kind of liked loopy. That night, they had a little welcoming do for me, and I met the whole bunch. I've never been much a drinker. I figured I might as well be the one person in the room with a clear head. Folks the planners couldn't have come up with a more interesting group of fancy mixed nuts. Marvin and L. Prill, musicians. If you're sticking around, you should catch our act sometime. If Ricky gives you a night off, I think he pushed the last one too hard. Rick's last assistant seemed to dig the gig. No idea where she scampered off to. Just like his wife, huh? Dr. Dan Obert, engineer. That's a unique necklace. Dr. Cal Himes, chemist. Rick give it to you? I was a model too, until Frankenstein here made me go back and get a master's degree. Professor Stephen Skiff and Dr. Sharon Skiff, physicist. The world needs prettier scientists. Just look around this room. You'll be auditioning in your spare time? Girl like you. I mean, it's obvious. Philip Vega, screenwriter. Adolphus and Jonah Perkunis, filmmakers. And Adolphus' wife, Paula, folk singer. We love you, unless you're a communist. American communists are the most boring of all communists. She's too pretty to be a communist, you maniacs. Did you have a nice time? They're a bunch they're a fun bunch of bananas. You didn't tell me your assistant ran off too. Been a rough month, Betty. I got the wind knocked out of my sails. That's one of the reasons you're such a breath of fresh air. Were you fooling around with her? Your assistant? Name was Christine. She was a good egg, and I'm worried about her. I'm sorry, Rick. It's been a long day, and you probably don't want to talk about this stuff right now. I can take it. But I do have one last question before you sack out. You didn't really need any help getting down from that fire escape. It's not a question. Good night, Rick. Next day, we went to work. The setup was pure Captain Video. Little research outfit. I didn't want to scare you off. Captain Video was out the cardboard sets and sparklers. Real rockets and real mad scientists. But at the end of the tour, it was, after all, just a desk, a typewriter, phone, and an intercom. Like any job I had in New York that wasn't modeling. Everyone at PAST was pretty nice, though there was an ape or two in the crowd. There always is. Betty, could you stand in and take a letter? 
but the boss kept a helpful eye on me. I moved around a lot in my life, so within a week I had settled in pretty well. The gang at the compound were mostly a gas, and I stuck close to the fun ones. Rick kept pretty busy, and that didn't need me that much. <clears throat> Rick kept pretty busy and didn't need me that much, which gave me time to pursue other things. Invasion of the Space Commies. Open call for female lead. Ursula, queen of the Space Commies. Casting director, Ilsa Lania. Hollywood had burned me before, but I was willing to give it another shot. The auditions were ridiculous. It beats sitting at the desk. Because the longer I sat at that desk, holy moly. She's got a symbol of Thelema. Was she a, thel was she a Thelemus? The more I started wondering about Christine, I, I used to wear that symbol, folks. For a long, 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 long time. The more I started wondering about Christine, Rick's last assistant. Rick wasn't there to remind me about the strong scientific evidence concerning the short-term effects of curiosity on cats. Huh. Five o'clock. Funny time to start taking apart your desk. What have you got there? Bottle of expensive French perfume. I don't care how big a rush Christine was in. I can't imagine leaving a bottle of Chanel number no. 5 behind. What do you mean? Don't you think something happened? You, you don't think something happened to her, do you? I keep hearing she was a smart girl, level-headed. Just didn't show up one day. Remember anything strange about her last few days? I bet you've already figured out what happens next. Now that you mention it, she was asking a lot of questions about Building 8 and the Benway Wave Modulator. I'm walking out. Hold on. I'm walking out. Would you like me to take you over there? Maybe it'll give you some clues, Nancy Drew. That'd be great, Dan. Thanks. Well, I had an idea for what I might be in for, too. I wasn't born yesterday. Let me just close up Rick's office. Natch. I hope the note would be enough. Dan has taken me to build an 8 Benway. Wave modulator. I don't trust him. Betty. Ready, Bets? Sure thing. Just one question before we go. Does this rag smell like chloroform to you? Stupid question at the time. I didn't have a clue what chloroform smells like. But now I do. And funny thing, it smelled exactly like chloroform. When I came out of it, I wasn't surprised to find myself tied up. I was a little surprised to come out of it at all. At all. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Now you will know what happened to Christine. Great, right? Don't get too close to those torches, Danny. That cheap aftershave will light you up like a Christmas tree. Funny, but you won't be funny much longer. Whap! When the master arrives, he will use a great machine and you will be born anew. No thanks, I hate to lose my sense of humor. After all, my looks won't last forever and then what? Smart girl. You will have peace, the master will show you. Nothing is true, everything is permitted. Um. What's a girl got to do when the cavalry is running late? Men can be so unreliable. Now, I'm not going to tell you that I was a guy that believed that for years. Still kind of do in some ways. But, let's go on. Flack! Crash! A chain reaction. That's physics, isn't it? Maybe this place is rubbing off on me. Thwip! Oof! Slang! Crack! The cavalry at last. Better late than dead, as the saying goes. Stop right there, Rick. You're gonna let me walk out of here or I cut her pretty throat. Halloween's over, Dan. You're not going anywhere. I'll kill her. Like fun, you will. Gah! Crunch! Crack, crack, crack. You dumb clucks, it was a sword. It didn't need to ventilate the poor bastard. Hey! Jeez, Mr. Chaplin. He could have skewered you. We weren't taking no chances. Would one of you jokers like to help a girl out? Whoosh! I take my eyes off you for a minute and look what happens. Thanks for the note. Thanks for coming for... Thanks for coming for me. You're welcome. Are you Okay. Okay, I'm better than okay. I'm the queen of the space commies. Next, invasion of the space commies.
Golly, Sarge, I ain't never seen anything like this before. Hold on, let's do that better. Golly, Sarge, I ain't never seen nothing like this before. Steady, man, be ready for anything. Great. Ah. Remember, boys, we're America's first line of defense against those outer space collectivist weirdos. Thunk. Man of Earth, bow before your new queen. Man, she really strikes a pose up there. The Secret Diary of Betty Page, Chapter 2, Queen of the Space Commies. Fire! Pucka, 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 pucka. Arr! Die, humans! Wash! So beautiful, so deadly. Earthmen are strong and pretty. Thor! Don't know whether I should kiss you or kill you. What is kiss? Someone should teach you. No man teaches the queen. Space witch. Crack. Thunk. Cut. Seems like you tossed me a little hard there, kitten. What have I done? I'm awful sorry, Jimmy. Are you okay? Jesus, Betty, forget Jimmy. Look what you did to my set. You're a prince, Andy. You're a prince, Andy. I don't know what to say, Andy. I didn't mean to break your flying saucer. I guess you don't know your own strength. At least you did it after we got the master. We'll move in on close-ups of the G.I.s and the space commies while you two get cleaned up and the carpenters repair the magic. I should have taken that Doyle Valdez picture with Capital. So far, Hollywood was working out just fine. Sure, I could grouse about last week and those goofballs in the robes who tried to make me some kind of human sacrifice, but I'm still breathing, and they got there, so joke's on them. Some nights, I even got a swanky ride home. How would things go at the Dream Factory today? I invaded the Earth and broke a flying saucer with 190 pounds of hamburger and fatigues. How are things at the rocket mill? Everyone miss me? Everyone is beside themselves with grief, but they understand being queen of the space commies as a title that comes with heavy responsibilities. Have you found out any more about those Halloween sickos who tied me up? I'm working on it. In fact, I had a mind to do a little digging tonight if you're game. The game is? What's your lead, Sherlock? I found I found a book in Dan's room. Sky Science. Elroy Benway. Hmm. Show started an hour ago, but we're just here to catch the exit. Wait a minute. Benway? Isn't that the name of the what you says? The, the what you who's it's that had me tied up to? The Benway? The Benway Wave Modulator. Yep. So this guy used to work at PAST? He sure did. Worked hard, too. Right up to the point where he ran off with my wife. Hold on, mister. You can't just drop an A-bomb like that. Get ready to write his make, model, and license number when we see which car he gets into. Once we've got it, get ready to run to the car. You're lucky I'm in flats or I'd clobber you right now. Here he comes. Elroy's coming up in the world and... Elroy's coming up in the world. Muscle and everything. Hudson, Hornet, and Red. You got that plate number? Got it. Most men buy me flyers and candy. I'm willing to bet a girl like you is bored with flyers and candy. You wasn't wrong. I don't know if any man ever understood me. Not completely. But Rick Chaplin, he did better than most. And he knew just how to show a girl like me a good time. What do we do when we catch him? We don't catch him. For now, I just want to know where this spider is holed up. What the devil? Looks like there's a toad across this bridge. Get down! Rada tada tada! Scree! Rada tada tada! Rada tada tada! So that was fun? Yeah, barrel of monkeys. Do you have any friends who aren't violent maniacs? Well, there's you, so. No, all my friends are violent maniacs, 100%. Ha ha ha! Ha ha ha! <laughs> and they continue laughing. I know, it wasn't that funny, but try driving a convertible through a hail Tommy gunfire sometime and see if you don't crack when it's over. Rick was upset we lost track of Benway. I was glad we were alive and went back to work. No one shot at me for a few days. It was nice. Work was mostly a ball. I mean, it wasn't without its challenges. Fuck! But that's the life of a working woman in these United States. After our adventure, Jack didn't take me out again that week. 
He was combing the papers for anything about Elroy Benway and Sky Science. I was pretending to prepare for the movie's big climatic scene. I guess Global Pictures blew the whole budget on this one, Big Location Day. On, uh, on this big one... On this one big location day, they sure didn't spend it on the screenplay. Or to be fair, the lead actress. So you say your lines, the space company lights up the dingus, and then the crowd runs for their lives? Aces. Wow. Our prop guy made that? No, the screenwriter brought it in, believe it or not. He used to be some kind of scientist, I guess. He even cast a special space commie to operate it. Say, Andy, you know, I never caught the writer's name before. It's supposed to be a big secret, but I guess I can tell you it's... We're ready to go, Andy. We'll talk after we get the master, hun. Places, everyone. Roll! Sound! Oh, no. Mark! Action! Cower, Earthmen! Your doom is upon you! Fire the fear ray, my slave! By your command. Vov, 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 that's the cue. You're all supposed to run for it. Come on, damn it, run! Vo, 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 vo. They're not running, Larry. Why aren't they running? I don't know, Andy. You know that feeling when you know just something awful is happening but haven't figured out what it is yet? Tear each other to shreds now! Crack! Turn that thing off. What are you trying to do? Exactly what you see. Chaos. Grab her. Gangway for the Space Queen, kids. I've taken bigger leaps, but not many of them. Oof. Cut it out, all of you. This is your queen, and I command you to settle down. That seemed to do the trick, whatever the trick was in this place. Flick. Stop, you freak. I probably should have pointed the fear ray at him, but you always think of these things later. There's no escape route up there, genius. The view is beautiful from the top of the observatory. Neither of us had time to enjoy it. The cops will be here any minute. They're not going to like making that climb any more than I did. I'll be gone before they get here, little meddler. Going to fly away, spaceman? Something like that. Mm -hmm. Don't be sad, sweetheart. We'll be seeing each other. We'll, don't be sad, sweetheart. We'll be seeing each again. Till then, Betty Page. Whoosh. Hooray for Hollywood. Next, take Maholland. Holy. Oh, good. You see it, too. I see something. I just don't know what it is. So this is your first flying saucer? It's my second, but it's the first one that's not hanging from fishing line. At least you're dressed for it. I don't suppose you'd like to tell me... It. Hold on, hold on. I don't suppose you like to tell a uniformed police officer what in the holy hell is going on. Cuff that woman, Druk. This isn't a coffee clatch, it's a crime scene. And your new buddy Wonder Woman is a suspect. We cuff those. Ever read The Day of the Locust? On this short trip, Hollywood was already living up to its reputation. I might have been queen of outer space, but it looks like all my subjects ran out on me. Secret Diary of Betty Page, Chapter 3. Take my Holland. Let me guess... This is the star of the fiasco? Found her on the roof, Lieutenant John, with Druk. We were talking about flying saucers. Seen any lately? Haven't seen any flying saucers, but do you want to tell me what that thing is? It's an MGM prop that found its way onto a Poverty Row picture. Smart mouth, huh? Let me explain something to you, Princess. Oh, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I did that wrong. Smart mouth, huh? Let me explain something to you, Princess. You're not the star anymore. The minute I showed up, you got demoted to bit player. You want it straight? I give it to you straight. Thanks for the warning. Let's hear it. We were shooting a science fiction picture with a budget so low you could carry it around in nickels without your arm getting tired. That prop o oh, oh, hold on. But she said, but you're not going to like it. Oh, yeah. She says, that prop over there comes from Pacific Aerospace Technologies. It's an honest-to-goodness mind-control gizmo. 
They turn it on the extras. The extras went ape on each other when I chased the guy behind the machine onto the roof and climbed aboard a large floating disc and zoomed off. If that's your notion of straight, I'd hate to hear your idea of crooked. You've earned a trip to the station. You can think of a better story on the way. It's hard to come up with a better story than one that's true. This whole diary proves that, but I was working on it. So far, I was coming up shorter than Mickey Rooney on his knees. That, that's a funny one. Hope you didn't chip a nail, your highness. Can I believe a smart girl like a... Like, can't believe a smart girl like you hasn't learned not to back sass police. You gonna tell them what you saw? Oh, no, no. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're gonna... Yeah, yeah. She says, who does your manicure, Callahan? You don't know what I saw. You don't even know what you saw. It's been my week for seeing crazy things. Flying saucer the craziest thing, but we both saw it clear as day. Holy cow. What's happening? Come see for yourself. I can't decide if this is going to help your case or hurt it. Reports that are of a riot at Griffith Park Observatory are made even more mysterious in light of this video, captured by our Southland News cameraman shortly after the incident. Sky Science predicted it. Our Sky Brothers are here to show us the way. I get a phone call, right? You have Captain Video's phone number? You know the old saying. That's the problem with rocket scientists. They're never around when you need them. Can't say it was a surprise. In my life, an unreliable man was nothing special. No one seemed that interested in me anymore. So I got a lot of convince. Blah, blah. I got to work convincing Lisa to let me go. Or Lisa. Yeah, her name is Lisa. Lucky for me, Officer Lisa Droop was a sensible gal, and she didn't like Callahan any more than I did. Her shift was ending, so she even offered me a ride home, even though I couldn't tell you if it was out of kindness or curiosity. If it was curiosity, I figured I could probably take advantage of that. Judge me if you must, but I did. You know, Global Picture Studio is only five blocks from here. It'd be kind of interesting to see what's going on over there after everything that's happened tonight. You're just trouble all the live long day, aren't you? I guess we have that in common. A wide open gate at midnight is not a good sign. Maybe I can find some clothes to change into, at least. There's what's left of my flying saucer. Looks like there ain't nobody here but us chickens. Ain't nobody here at all. I have this crazy feeling I'm not getting paid. I have this crazy feeling that's the least of your troubles. What the? I'm already tired of this guy. So, so he's not just a kook, he's also a crappy writer. Invasion of the Space Commies. Fourth draft by Elroy Benway. Benway, the sky is science guy? There is some colossal con going on here. Not much for following the rules, are you, Druk? What are you doing out here and out of uniform? Witness told me a story and I'm here checking it out. Real question is, what are you doing here and why are you and Donald out of uniform? That sure ain't no way for you to be talking to me, rookie. Ain't no need for this to go ugly. Don't you even say what you're thinking. How about you and Donald step out of that door frame and me and Betty go about our way, real peaceful-like, and we'll just forget all about this whole night. I'm sure none of us thought that would work, but right then the idea was to get out of the room alive. That's the ticket. Nobody's pretty face needs to get messed up tonight if we all play nice. After you. Thanks ever so. Don't forget to shut the lights off before you go. Sure thing, doll. Say... Why don't you hand over that script? Can't have you stealing things from these nice people. Sure thing, doll. Thwack! Ow! Thud! Walk! Whore! Oof! Gotcha, bitch! Let go of me, you gorilla! Oh, crack! Stop, goddammit! It wasn't a plan. I guess Lissa could tell I was about to do something stupid. God bless her, she was prepared for it. Well, there goes my badge. I bet a C-note you wanted to smash that ox in the mouth since 10 seconds after you met him. No way I would take that bet. I still can't dope out how or why those goons showed up here. Or showed up there. What kind of unholy mess have you got me into, girl? I'll tell you on the way to Pasadena. I gotta get out of this space cleaning nonsense and into some clothes. It was a pretty drive. Las Feliz Boulevard, Pasadena Freeway, and at midnight, no traffic. Los Angeles is at its best in moments like that. 
Even without traffic, it was enough time to tell her the whole crazy story. From the feds raiding the photo shoot at Scallywag Magazine, the zombie extras in Griffith Park. But the thing about crazy stories, they can always get crazier. Boom! Oh my god, my friends! Anyone who was in there is gone. I'm sorry, Betty. Is there any chance they were out at this hour? I can't imagine. Any other night, I think it'd been a gas leak, but tonight, this is just part of whatever it is. Rick didn't pick up the phone. There's no chance he's alive. We better make ourselves scarce. We could hole up at my flop in Baldwin Hills until we figure out what to do. Actually, I think I know where I can find at least two of my roommates. Maybe they can answer some questions. I don't suppose you have any extra clothes in your car. My whole wardrobe just got torched. I guess I'm lucky. The Dresden is kind of dressy. I'm glad I had something. I don't generally drive around with civilian clothes in the trunk for space queens on the lamb to slip into. I'm sure you look gorgeous in it at your cousin's wedding reception. You're too kind. Your friends work here? Oh yeah, they work here alright. Somewhere there's music, how faint the tune. Somewhere there's heaven, how high the moon. They're solid, and they're alive. And staying that way, and staying that way. <laughs> maybe, maybe they'll tell the rest of us, the uh, rest of the gang all went out for midnight bowling. Clap, 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 okay. Thanks, cats and kittens. We'll take a short break to consult with my pharmacist and be back in ten. After introductions and a little small talk about jazz, I couldn't put it off anymore and told them about the compound. Considering I was telling them all their stuff was gone and maybe all their friends were dead, they took it pretty well. Poor Calvin and Paula and those sweet Lithuanians. I just can't believe it. This is all Rick's fault. I knew he would kill us all someday. What do you mean? If it wasn't one thing, it was another with that guy. Now, darling, the poor man may be dead. It's a miracle he lived this long. Him and his creepy friends playing with rockets in the backyard. Those nutty characters in the robes. Who lives like this? Californians, I'm telling you. Meshuggah! Look. It's Phil Vega. We have another survivor. He's another one of your roommates? Yeah, Phil Vega. Screenwriter or something. I can see it on your face. You've been to the house. I was there when it blew up. They stop at nothing. They? Who's they? Who is this? Her name is Lissa, and she saved my skin a few times tonight. We're out of time, so I have to take your word for it. We've got to get moving. What are you talking about? Look straight past my right shoulder. They're already here. Not terribly subtle, are they? We can leave through the kitchen. I have a car out back. None of this makes any sense. When in doubt, run the fight another day. But we have another set. We're not going anywhere. No one is going to shoot me during autumn leaves. You sure you don't want to come with us? We'll be fine. There's a bed in the office upstairs until we find a new place. But you be careful. He's another California kook and he's paranoid. Don't trust him. We're back, cats and kittens, and let's have a big hand for the proud representatives of the IRS now moving through the main lodge. The main lounge, rather. Oh, wow, there's the cook. Oh, man, look at that chef. The chef is pissed. What are you doing? What are you doing to run into my chef? Don't you understand? I, I, you know, I just had to. Sometimes you have to go with a tried and true gag, but it just because it worked in a Keystone Cops 2 reeler doesn't mean it'll work in real life. Thud. Score one for Max Senate, I guess. I don't remember volunteering for the circus and even if he was dead, I was starting to get a little sore, Rick. Come on, Betty. So where are we going? I know a safe place. That's swell, Philip. What else do you know? Who were those men? Who blew up our house? Is everybody else dead? And what does it all have to do with Elroy Benway? Those men were Soviet agents. They blew up our house. Everyone in the compound was a member of a top-secret Air and Force Intelligence Unit called Project Grudge. Even you, Betty, though you didn't know it. Betty? I have no idea what she's talking about. Project Grudge was originally supposed to root out communist infiltrators in our advanced aerospace sector. But ironically, Grudge itself was compromised from the very top by a two-faced commie trader named... Rick Chaplin. No! Rick recruited the best minds he could find. He gathered us all in one place so we could be taken out with a single blow. 
I was lucky to get away in time, but if we're not careful by morning, PAST, with all its advanced technology, will be controlled from Moscow. You're lying. Rick's a good guy. Who brought you out here, Betty? Who got you involved in all this? But don't worry. We made it to the one place we can be safe. The one place Chaplin can't get us. We've all had that nightmare. The one where you're running from something scary. Thunk! You run and you run and you run. But it's no good. You're rooted to the spot you can't get away. And the monster, the Dracula, the devil, whatever it was you were most afraid of, it's got you. You're stuck. Your head is straight into its open jaws and there's no way out. Only difference this time was, you haven't helped me, I was wide awake for it. Betty Page, I've heard such amazing things about you. So nice of you to come and, and, and bring a friend. Elroy Benway, I presume. Next, Betty and the Beast. Ooh, look at that one. That is nice. Secret Diary of Betty Page, Chapter 4, Betty and the Beast. It had been a long night. Any night where you get surrounded by crowds of zombies twice is a long night. First bunch were film extras under the influence of some crazy mind control gadget. I didn't hear one of the machines humming, so the second bunch were under the influence. They were volunteer zombies. Much more terrifying. Professor Elroy Benway, Doctor of Divinity, Physicist, Warrior, and Speaker of the Sky Science. Well, I've been scared before, I've been surrounded before, and I've survived. These Halloween characters weren't going to beat me. Finally, it's such a thrill to meet you, Professor. If only you just invited me over a little earlier, we could have avoided a lot of rumpus. Me and Lissa here, we've been chasing our tails all night, and it was all a waste of time and energy over a silly misunderstanding. Is that so? Poor Dan Obert is in the morgue. You disrupted the field test of the Benway Wave Modulator and it was in the hands of the police for hours. Was? Officer Callahan, he helped you get it back, right? Why, yes. He's still a little sore from where you kicked him. That's what I'm talking about, Professor. I got dragged into this thing without a scorecard. Dan chloroformed me and tied me up. You tested on your machine on our movie set. Callahan and his buddy showed up uninvited to strong arm us. How was I to know what was really going on? So you're not part of Chaplin's group? You're not with Project Grudge? It's what you want me to believe. You're not a government agent? Ha 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 ha! Oh, Professor, come on now! I'm a model, simple southern gal, not some Manhattan model Harry. I've heard J. Edgar looks great in a dress, but you don't see in a dress, but you don't see G-Man on the cover of Scalawag magazine, brother. Rick Chaplin wanted a pretty secretary. That's all there is to it. The rest has been one long slide on a banana peel. I don't think we have to crowd these nice ladies so closely, my sons. Keep grabbing me, and you'll see how nice I am. Thanks, Professor. Your helpers have strong hands. We were starting to bruise. My apologies. I may have misjudged you. No sweat, Doc. I've only just started reading your book, and it's perfectly fascinating. You're interested in sky science? Of course. It's the wave of the future. You're the prophet for the next step of man's evolution. You'd think an educated man, a man of the world, would see through such bunk. You'd think that unless you spend any time around geniuses, they're never suspicious of flattery, God bless them. You're a remarkably perceptive young woman. Perhaps you can be of some help in my crusade. Gosh, that'd be such an honor, Professor. I can't wait to find out what you've been cooking up here and do my part for human destiny. I know what you're thinking. Come on, Betty. There is such a cliche that the bad guy... <clears throat> Hold on. <clears throat> Come on, Betty. This is such a cliche. Bad guy is going to lay out his entire plot? I'm telling you. 1951, this was a bad... Uh, this was a thing bad guys still did. Don't take my word for it. Ask Doc Savage. Ask Ian Fleming. It only became a cliche because it all happened It happened all the time back then. Sometimes it came with cocktails. Manhattan's okay with you, ladies? Sure thing, Callahan. Sorry about the kick. If the professor says it's bygones, it's bygones. Thanks, buddy. You're a good egg. And I wasn't the least bit sorry about scrambling yours. That thing in the backyard, I saw it fly. You did? A lot of Los Angeles did tonight. You took it from Pacific Aerospace Technologies. You stole Rick's wife and his spaceship. Right again, Miss Page. Sharp as a knife and twice as pretty. You would be useful. Poor Rick didn't know how to use either of them. 
So wait, flying saucers, that's just secret stuff from P PAST? You're saying the government is behind all that? The answer to that is a trifle complicated and quite a bit above a humble pi patrol woman's pay grade. Suffice it to say, PAST put it together and they were squandering it. A miracle like that and they want to hide it. So what do you plan to do with it, Professor? Phil Vega told me in a fairy tale and uh, Phil Vega told me a fairy tale in the car about Chaplin working for the Ruskies, but it sounded like hooey to me. He was stalling until we got to you. Your friend Mr. Chaplin still believes these petty squabbles between mere men. These wars, hot and cold, he thinks they matter. The universe is bigger and grander than capitalism versus communism, US versus USSR. Americans constructed that miraculous machine outside and Russians helped me steal it. Now it is mine. Drill for oil, mine for gold. The greatest natural resource in the world is fear, and fear of the unknown is the greatest fear of all. You've done so well, Betty. Tell me you understand what happens next. You terrify the public with that saucer, and then you claim to solve the problem of sky science? <clears throat> Hold on. You terrify the public with that saucer, and then you claim to solve the problems of sky science with your book? Please don't tell me this is about selling books. The right book can make you the most powerful man in the world, Betty. The Bible is just a book. After the book comes the movement. Look around you, it's already started. So are you in? Lissa was tough, and I'm no powder puff, but we were two girls surrounded by armed maniacs, and they were holding all the cards. Then one came to me. Not a card, more like a hanging thread. So I tugged on it. We're in, Professor. I'm curious about one thing, though. Where's Elena Chaplin? There aren't supposed to be basements in Los Angeles homes. I guess the building codes don't say anything specifically about dungeons. Vow, 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 vow. I know that sound. Indeed you do. When Helena sourced on... Uh, when when Helena soured on... Or Helena. I think it was either Helena or Helena. Helena soured on things. She became the first test subject. It's ironic, I suppose. Vow, 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 vow. I believe I've invented the future of detention as well. The machine is at its lower setting, but prolonged exposure and proximity makes the subjects entirely malleable. They're like house they're like hot house plants. Compared to iron bars and chains, it's very humane, Professor. Precisely, they wait here until I might need them. You see, no one has been harmed. I thought you might be relieved. I hope blowing up the house might keep you from looking for them, but I underestimated you. We're not going to do all the vows because we get it. Of course, now that you've joined me, maybe someday we could take out, we could take one out of the wave modulations on for a few minutes and you could try talking sense into them. I'm sure I could make them come around. Waiting for the dawn, hope for the nightmare to melt away wasn't working. So a plan was starting to form. A bad one. I didn't think I could get to the off switch in time, but maybe. I'd love to know more about how the wave modulator works. I can't believe it runs on simple AC on simple AC current. The physics of it are quite complex, my dear. The wave itself is generated by other means. The AC current is necessary to project it. No! Go, Betty! Thump! Fizz! Oof! Snap out of it, Rick! Hold on. Snap out of it, Rick! Baby, I can't wait to bump you off. Elena? Fuck! Gah! Crack! Ugh! This'll help. Not enough. There's a dozen of them. Still up there, at least. There's gotta be a better way. Blam, blam, blam! Who are they shooting at? Could it be a mutiny? We should take a look. Rick, no! Blam, blam! Stay here. We'll find a phone and call the cops. Careful look, honey. Don't worry. I'm not going to do anything stupid now. I've got you back from that monster. You look after our friends. I won't be gone long. I'll lead the way. She's pretty. Girl, right now? What? She is pretty. rat a tat a tat a tat a blam blam Let's talk about it when we're not surrounded by wackos in robes who are having a gun battle around a flying saucer. Blam, blam, blam. I didn't know where this story was going. There are a couple spots where I've said, and then all heck broke loose, but I'm saving it for this moment because I knew where this story was going. Blam, blam, blam. 
Blam, blam, blam. Aren't those your friends, the musicians? Did you guys see them right before you came here? I wonder which one of the which one of you Marvin put the homing transmitter on. We surrender, cease fire. Now you want to cease fire? You don't shoot at federal agents. What's with you, maniacs? Oh, Marvin, be cool. Good work, cats. I was counting on you two. Look! Benway! Don't shoot. You do not want to hit that machine, I promise. You'll get away! I still don't know why I did it. At the time, I might have told you I was closest to the saucer. But that wasn't it. I was just mad. And Benway, Benway, there's everything wrong in the world. Everything wrong with my life in one slimy package. Betty, no! Where's she going? She's a nut! Mm -hmm. I've said it a million times, leaving without looking. Always and forever my problem. Mm -hmm. Funk! I was too terrified to think about what was happening. I was on a flying saucer. And from the feel of things, a flying, flying saucer. What's wrong with you, Elroy? You! You have this amazing thing, this beautiful magic thing, and you want to use it to scare people? People are dumb animals. Beauty and magic are wasted on them. They exist to be ruled and to serve, to serve me. My crazy necklace, what's that doing here? Don't touch that. You don't understand. It's not, you don't understand. It's not a necklace. It's part of the power system. It's beautiful, magical. But beauty and magic are wasted on me, right, Doc? No, stop. Don't take the magic away. It was a little late to wonder if they had parachutes on board this thing. Trillium. Now that I know how to use a parachute, this is why I leap without looking. Seeing where you're going isn't so great. Crush. Shut up. This isn't cheesecake. You try swimming for your life in a dress sometime. I definitely owe this of my life and a new dress. I'm surprised it found me so fast. But I guess Crash and Flying Saucer I guess a Crash and Flying Saucer isn't that hard to follow. I don't suppose any of you gents thought to bring a towel. No, come on, fellas, it's been the longest night ever. Looking for a towel? Good morning, Miss Page. My name is McKnight. Like to get a cup of coffee? This hour the pie will be nice and fresh at the apple pan. Sure, Slick, but someone's going to have to let me borrow their pants. Next, those. Originally published in Playboy magazine, which no longer exists. December 1951. I was back in New York and nothing crazy had happened to me for weeks. My life was as a secret operative had gone quiet. Absolutely zip on the G-Man front. On the one hand, no one was trying to kill me or brainwash me. On the other hand, I'd be lying if I said my cloak and dagger side hustle wasn't a gas. Secret Diary, Betty Page, Red Christmas. So I can't say I was disappointed when McKnight barged in on my shoot. Miss Page, if we could have a word. This ain't a peep show, fella, and I'm a cop. It's okay, Jerry, I know this character. Give us a minute. Interesting hobby for a cop. What's the matter, Colonel? Don't want to wait for the next pinup mag to hit the stands? I'll come right to it. Your country needs you again, Betty. You waving the flag at me? I don't need the hard sell. What's the rumpus? Colonel McKnight made with the straight dope. Uh, oh, the Colonel McKnight made with the straight dope. The cheerful mug belonged to Professor Cosmo Carradine. He was making dangerous gizmos for the Air Force, and he'd been acting a little squirrely lately. Professor Gigglepuss had RSVP'd to a holiday gala thrown by a big New York publisher tonight. He didn't seem like the party type. That wasn't what the Air Force was concerned about. What was getting Colonel McKnight starch bosters in a twist was Santa Claus here. Tedder Krop, uh, Kropotkin, more like Soviet Claus. He was Moscow's top agent in New York, deadly despite the look of him. And can you guess? He'd be at the party. And if Carradine and Kropotkin had a date, McKnight wanted me to crash it. McKnight didn't have an invite for me, but he had faith. Models don't have a lot of trouble getting into parties. It wasn't hard to spot Carradine. He was a one-man Roman orgy in Tweed. He seemed too dull to be a defector or a turncoat. Were the Rosenbergs this much fun at parties? 
I didn't see any sign of Kropotkin, but two seltzers and four disappointed gorillas later, the professor made his move. He moved fast for a stick bug. Penthouse. Lucky, right? Nowadays you just hit the button yourself. Back in 1951, you had to tell a guy your floor. No fooling. With any luck, I'd only be a minute or two behind him. Ding! Your floor, miss. Thank you. Why'd everything have to be so loud? With any luck, Carradine and that Russian bear were out of earshot. I was starting to get the impression the professor was new to this spy stuff. Newer to me, even. Promise me you will publish my account precisely as I have related it, no matter how fantastic the narrative. I wouldn't have it any other way, Professor Carradine. Public has a right to know. Scalawag magazine can bust this story wide open. McKnight had it all wrong. Carradine wasn't meeting a commie spy. He had a date with a whole other kind of snake. His dance partner was Ken Lau, publisher of some of the cheap magazines that did so well printing my pictures. My overlords think the public is not ready, Mr. Lau, but I think they underestimate the American people. I present the Roswell Mass. That's it? Where's the magic, Doc? Like this, Mr. Lyle? Mercy. Mazar Mora! My team has been trying to figure out this magic since 1947. We think it's related to their propulsion systems, but I'm damned if I know much more. Let go of me, crazy woman! Not a chance, Teddy. He was bigger and stronger, but between the light show and my evening gown, there was a lot to distract him. Last thing Tommy the Snowman expected was me, was me grabbing his gun. They found me, which they, pig. McKnight definitely owed me one evening gown. Oof. Thump. Well, it's supposed to be the thump. Oof. Yeah. No. That thing. The Roswell Mass. The Roswell Mass, you mean? I have a feeling it'll get taken care of. It's like, yet. <laughs> I just, I don't know what to do now. We're gonna go down the lobby and wait for some nice men in black suits who are gonna want to hear your whole story. While we wait, I want to tell you everything that's wrong with your magazine. Do I have a choice? One thing, spring for color photos, you cheapskate. The magazine will sell better and your writing is terrible. If you paid top dollar for good writers, people would actually read the articles instead of just skipping to the half-naked girls. And what about, say, reviews of the best cars, clothes, hi-fi equipment? Catch the further adventures of Betty Page every month in Dynamite Comic Magazines. Covers! Oh, here we go. Look at that one. Classic Betty Page. Really did a good job of her. It's a little more cartoony. I like, I love that art style though. Oh, wow, that's her, for real. A little cat. Okay. Another one. Yeah, I know, right? You know what's funny? The incels would probably tell you she's a seven. And she used to be one of the most sought-after women back in the day. Oh, she got wrinkles on her face. She's a seven. Nah, bro, that's kind of how women look. Like, for real. I don't know. Ain't, ain't no... I should, I should do that. I should say, hey, this is Betty Page. Do y'all think she's a 10? Because she used to be a 10 with like every... They say, oh, her feet don't look right or something. You know, it's oh, like, folks, I'm sorry. Humans are humans. I don't know what y'all want, but it ain't fitting to happen. Betty Page. Book one. Oh, there's that. There's a dilemma right there. Hollywood Bound. Oh, look at that. Love that one. Another one. Welcome to San Diego. Ooh, I like that one. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Look at her again. So Betty Page right there. She's icon. I like that. There she is again. Gorgeous.
I mean, right now there's some damn incel. Oh, that's what I want. Why can't I have that? Well, I don't know, man. Because, you know, life is life. There she is again. Again, gorgeous. These, these are, these are all uh, real, you know, the real photos. I like to see these. Yep. Sensor, of course. Lord, don't want to show y'all too much. Right? She is again. Yep. Yes, sir. Betty Boop. What in the world is going on with old Betty Boop here? I mean, I have these books, but I, I is there a nominated writer. What's he gonna do? Is she fucking this clown guy? What the hell is going on here? Oh, okay. Well, Enter the Lizard. Quit bugging me. I don't know if these are good or not. I got them, but I don't know if y'all want me to read them. I might just throw them on like I did with Betty Page, and y'all let me know. Hey, and if you want more Betty Page, I got some more books. Uh, I think I got I got about four more books of this volume, and I got two more from the next volume. So we go ahead and do some more. Uh, just let me know. Oh, I want more Betty Page. Vampirella. We're not doing Vampirella for one month. You look at it and you say, Oh, I get it, Graham. You want to wait till Halloween. Yeah, I want to wait till October. I have, like, stupid amounts of Vampirella comics. I'm just saving them all up. Get ready for a lot of Vampirella. It's all going to be horror comics. We're not even going to do our regular comics. Like, you know, when we do The Boys and Transmetropolitan and, and stuff like that, Invisibles. Everything's held off for the um the horror comics we're all we're gonna do all horror comics so that's our oh yeah the the whole brand changes around october we have our it's all horror games and horror visual novels everything is gonna be horror so uh i hope you like it and we're gonna debut our movies which will be cool got some good Crazy horror movies. Not anything that some of you guys have ever seen before. I can't wait. But look at all these Vampirellas. We got the Masters. I have these Masters. Alan Moore. Mike Carey. Mike Carey wrote Lucifer. Alan Moore wrote everything great. Grant Morrison. Oh, and Mark Miller, too. Okay. Jeff Loeb. We know who he is. Look at these great writers. I bet these will be good. And these great writers wrote about this character who is... Wearing absolutely almost nothing. And now they're like, well, we should have women portrayed like that. You idiot. You wrote this stuff back in the 90s. Don't try to hide it. Well, I was a different person then. You were a better person then. Let's see. All right. <laughs> Let's go ahead. Uh, Archives Volume 1. Oh, we got these. We're, I'm thinking about starting with the original Vampirella magazine. It's in black and white. But y'all like your manga. And black and white. So y'all can handle Vampirella in black and white. 1950s. Oh, it's going to be based. Yeah, it's going to be based. Like fucking 1967. You know, yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's 50s. But I think it's like 60s, 70s, something like that. You'll see. Dare to be empowered. Wonder Woman meets the bionic woman. I don't know if I have this, but... Okay. Red Sonia, the she-devil with a sword, takes Manhattan. We will definitely be reading some Red Sonia. I've got a bunch of it, too. It's good stuff. Look at the art. Poison Ivy, Kiss, and the Dresden Files. Okay. Oh, she wrote the Kiss comic. Having Betty Page be a secret agent is a masterstroke. Classic pulp in every sense of the word. Ah, it's good stuff. She's more modest than Miss Blaze, but more peels than Miss. Uh, but peels more than Miss Emma. She's out vamp. She outvamps Vampirella, but she's sweeter than Honey West. She puts the mod and model and the bangs and bang bang. Now the world can know the truth. Her classified adventures back in 51 Hollywood have been declassified. Dynamite, David Avalon, and Colton Worley are proud to present the secret diary of Betty Page in handy comic book form. 
an homage to a forgotten treasure that today's world desperately needs to be reminded of. Outright geekery. If you like old school Hollywood, strong women, and weird tales, this comic is for you. Uh, so there you go. And we had strong women again. It's like, well, Grimm, they couldn't overpower. Yeah, I know. But the difference is, it, you know, it, it's a comic. It's, I mean, pulpy and... Yeah, we we know what would happen in many of these situations. Even with... Well, I don't know. Because with that uh, Invisibles, like, yeah, that girl was technically male strength and all that. So, yeah. But, uh, yeah. It is what it is, guys. It's supposed to be fiction, so, um, enjoy it. At any rate... This is the Grim Lord, and I am out for Grim's Comics Corner with Betty Page.